Metallurgy. Level 1 Common Core Video 1. Please take a moment to like and subscribe it's free and it will help me out. Ok let's get started. Apprenticeship Curriculum Standard. Precision Machining and Tooling. Level 1 Common Core. This is the first in a series of videos that cover the required content and more for metallurgy. And this video content covered is. Characteristics of metals. Describe identification systems for steels and cast iron. Let's take a look at the two objects on the screen. On the left is a brass spring, and on the right is a set of hardened ground gears. We can clearly see the obvious differences between the two of them let's take a look at. What makes them similar? Engineered metals. Machinist. Most of what we machine will be metals. We will be required to work with many different types of metals. Metals are solids comprised of atoms held together by a matrix of electrons. Metals are known for many properties, some they share with other engineering materials. Let's look at the periodic chart. Most elements are metals. To help us understand let's take a look at the six identifying properties of metal. A material is brittle if. When subjected to stress, it breaks with little elastic deformation and without significant plastic deformation. Brittle materials absorb relatively little energy prior to fracture, even those of high strength. Breaking is often accompanied by a snapping sound. An example of this would be cast iron. It will break rather than bend. Ductility is a measure of a material's ability to undergo significant plastic deformation before rupture or breaking. This can be expressed as percent elongation or area reduction using a tensile test. An example of ductile metal would be copper and machine steel that can be drawn into wire. Elasticity of a metal refers to the metal's ability to be distorted and returned to its original shape. Example of this in metal would be a heat-treated spring. Malleability is a physical property of metals. That defines their ability to be hammered, pressed, or rolled into thin sheets without breaking. This type of metal can be deform under compression and take on a new shape. Hardness is a measure of the resistance to localized plastic deformation, induced by either mechanical indentation or abrasion. Some materials, e.g. metals, are harder than others. Hardness is the resistance to penetration. Ultimate tensile strength. Often shortened to tensile strength. Ultimate strength is the maximum stress that a material can withstand while being stretched or pulled before breaking. Let's pale a match game. We will match five common metals. To the identifying properties that each one has. I will state a metal and then add the basic properties associated with each. Brittleness. Ductility. Elasticity. Malleability. Hardness. First metals up is. Cast iron. Now let's match it with the identifying properties. Brittleness. And. Ductility. And. Hardness. Steel. Now let's match it with the identifying properties. Ductility. Elasticity. Malleability. Hardness. Aluminum. Now let's match it with the identifying properties. Ductility. And. Malleability. Copper. Now let's match it with the identifying properties. Ductility. And. Malleability. Lead. Now let's match it with the identifying properties. Ductility. And. Malleability. Thank you for playing our little game. There are four characteristics of metals let's take a look at each of them. Characteristics of metals. Conduct heat and electricity. Why do metals conduct heat so well? The electrons in metal are delicalized electrons and are free-moving electrons, so when they gain energy. Heat. They vibrate more quickly and can move around. This means that they can pass on the energy more quickly. Characteristics of metals. Metals are generally heavy. Metals are naturally occurring elements that have a high atomic weight and a density some five times greater than that of water. Characteristics of metals. Distinctive luster when polished. The metal is a material that, when freshly prepared, polished, or fractured, shows a lustrous chemically. The precious metals, like the noble metals, are less reactive than most elements, have high luster and high electrical conductivity. Characteristics of metals. Can be mixed to make alloys. An alloy is purely a mixture of metals and sometimes non-metals, which are non-chemically bonded. For example, combining the metallic elements gold and copper produces red gold. Gold and silver becomes white gold. And silver combined with copper produces sterling silver. Metals can be divided into two general groups. Ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Ferrous metals are metals which contain iron. Ferrous is derived from the word ferrum, which is the Latin word for iron. Most of the time ferrous metals are used for workpiece materials. Ferrous metals. Cast iron. Steel. Stainless steel. 
Manganese steel. Metals can be divided into two general groups. Non-ferrous metals. Does not contain iron. Examples of non-ferrous metals. Aluminum. Magnesium. Copper. Zinc. Carbon steel. Is a steel with carbon content from about 0.05% up to 2.1% by weight. The definition of carbon steel from the American Iron and Steel Institute, IC. Steel is a mixture of the elements of iron and carbon. The amount of carbon the steel contains determines its suitability for the job. Carbon steels are broken down into three categories. Low carbon steel carbon content of 0.02% to 0.30%. Medium carbon steel carbon content of 0.30% to 0.60%. High carbon steel carbon content of 0.60% to 1.7%. Low carbon steel carbon content of 0.02% to 0.30%. Low carbon steel is also known as mild steel or machine steel. Lower carbon content steels have excellent wire drawing qualities. Gives good surface finish. Possess good weldability. Can be easily fabricated. Machinability of these steels is usually good. These steels have low strength but also low cost. Also parts which require case hardening, as this group of steels do not possess enough carbon to be hardened by heat treatment, but can be case hardened for a combination of a hardware resistant surface and a tough core. Medium carbon steel, 0.3% to 0.55% carbon. This steel contains enough carbon to be hardened in the conventional way, but can also be case hardened. Steels in this group are more able to resist wear and abrasion than low carbon steels. Machinability decreases with hardness, so they may present more difficulty in machining. Examples. Pliers. Screwdrivers. Gears. High carbon steel 0.55% to 1.5% carbon. The hardenability and tensile strength of carbon steels is directly proportional to the carbon content. The higher the carbon content, the more intense the hardness after heat treating and the more the difficulty in machining. The items must have the ability to withstand wear. Examples. Punches. Chisels. Files. Grills. Tool steels. Special carbon and alloy steels called tool steels have their own classification. Tool steel is a type of carbon alloy steel that is well matched for tool manufacturing, such as hand tools or machined eyes, to develop their best properties. Dual steels are always heat treated. Because the parts may distort during heat treatment. Precision parts should be semi-finished. Heat treated, then finished. Severe distortion is most likely to occur during liquid quenching. So an alloy should be selected that provides the needed mechanical properties with the least severe quench. There are six groups of tool steel. Water hardening. Cold work tool steels. Shock resisting. High speed. Hot work, and. Special purpose plastic mold tool steel. The choice of group to select depends on cost, working temperature, required surface hardness, strength, shock resistance, and toughness requirements. Water hardening, W grades. This is basically a high carbon steel. While it generally has a lower cost it cannot be used where high temperatures are involved. This steel can achieve a high hardness. But it is rather brittle when compared to other tool steels. All W grade tool steels must be water quenched which can lead to increased warping and cracking. Typical applications of W-grade tool steel include cold heading, cutting tools and knives, embossing, reamers and cutlery. Shock resisting types, S-grades. This type of tool steel has been designed to resist shock at low or high temperatures. Example jackhammer bits. Its low carbon content is required to achieve the necessary toughness. This group of metals has high impact toughness, but a low abrasion resistance. Typical applications of S-grade tool steel include battering tools, boiler shop tools, chisel blacksmiths, chisel cold working, chisel hot working, tuck jaws, clutch parts, collets, cold gripper, hot gripper, cold swaging, hot swaging, hot trimming, dipper knives, cold shear and hot shear. Cold work group. This is a group of three tool steels, oil hardening, air hardening, and high carbon chromium. The steels in the group have high hardenability and wear resistance. With average toughness. Typically they are in the production of larger parts or parts that have a minimum distortion requirement when being hardened. Both oil quenching and air hardening both reduce the distortion and higher stress caused by the quick water quenching. Because of this they are less likely to crack. Thread cutting dyes. Collets. Eye blanking. Cold forming. Cold trimming. Grill bushing. Ages. Knurling tools. High speed group. D-type and M-type tool steels are used for cutting tools when strength and hardness must be retained at high temperatures. High-speed steel, HSS or HS, is a subset of tool steels. 
commonly used in tool bits and cutting tools. It is often used in power saw blades and drill bits. It is superior to the older high carbon steel tools. It can withstand higher temperatures without losing its temper, hardness. Hot working group. H group tool steels were specifically developed to maintain strength and hardness while exposed to prolonged elevated temperatures. Hot working steels are a group of steel used to cut or shape material at high temperatures. H group tool steels were developed for strength and hardness during prolonged exposure to elevated temperatures. These tool steels are low carbon and moderate to high alloy that provide good hot hardness and toughness and fair wear resistance due to a substantial amount of carbide. H1 to H19 are based on a chromium content of 5%, H20 to H39 are based on a tungsten content of 9 to 18% and a chromium content of 3 to 4%. H40 to H59 are molybdenum based. Air hardening, A grades. This is a very versatile all-purpose tool steel that is characterized by low distortion factor during heat treatment. Due to the increased chromium content. This tool steel has good machinability and a balance of wear resistance and toughness. Typical applications of A-grade tool steel include. Arbors. Pams. Eye bending. Blanking. Coining. Embossing. Cold forming. Lamination. Cold swaging. Cold trimming. Ages. Chipper knives. Cold shear knives. Woodworking knives. Lathe center knives. Special purpose group plastic mold steel. D-type tool steel is short for plastic mold steels. They are designed to meet the requirements of zinc die casting and plastic injection molding dies. Common steel grades like P20, 420 etc. L-type tool steel is short for low alloy special purpose tool steel. 6 lira is extremely tough. F-type tool steel is water hardened and substantially more wear resistant than W-type tool steel. Power tool steels identified. That identifies the group of tool steel. And then one or two numbers that identify the one of several in the group. What makes tool steels different than the carbon and alloy steels found in the SAE IC systems? Typically the amount of alloying elements is greater to provide special purpose characteristics. Properties that elements impart on carbon steel. High manganese steel. In small quantities of 0.08% or less. It has the effect of purifying the steel. When steel contains 1.5% to approximately 5% manganese it becomes quite brittle. Beyond this point, up to around 15% manganese. It becomes more ductile and very hard. These steels are work hardenable. Which means the surface becomes hard when something is attempting to wear or penetrate it. High manganese steels are used for. Rock crushing machinery. Spline shafts. Rifle barrels. Nickel steel when alloyed, up to 5% nickel, a very elastic alloy is produced. Nickel steel can be stretched more than most alloy steels and returned to its original size without permanent deformation. Because of this property it is used extensively for. Armor plate. Portions of railroad tracks subjected to stresses, curves and track switches. Pumps. Chemical industry equipment. Nickel chromium steel. The addition of nickel and chromium to carbon steel gives the alloy greater strength and good corrosion resistance. This alloy is extremely hard and strong, and like nickel steel, it is used for armor plate. The ratio of these alloying elements is two parts nickel to one part chromium. Besides armor plate, nickel chromium steel is used for lathe centers and chuck jaws. Molybdenum steel. The addition of molybdenum raises the melting point of the steel, making it able to withstand high temperatures. Molybdenum can be added to high speed steel in place of tungsten to increase its shock resistance and the ability of the alloy to be hardened. This alloy is used in the manufacture of ball and roller bearing. Automotive parts. Construction equipment. And gas transmission pipes. Chromium steel. When chromium is present in steel and amounts up to 12%, it is called chromium steel. Beyond this point it is known as stainless steel. In these lower amounts it increases the hardenability of the alloy. Chromium steel is used for armor piercing shells, safes, roller bearings, stone crushing machinery. Chromium vanadium steel. A small amount of vanadium added to chromium steel increases the tensile strength and the shock resistance of this alloy. Automobile steering parts are commonly made from this alloy because of its ability to resist corrosion and continual stresses. Great material for high-quality tools. Commonly used for wrenches. Screwdrivers. Tungsten steel usually contains from 5% to 20% tungsten. Of all the metals discussed, tungsten has the highest melting point. Used to produce. High-speed steel cutting tools. Which are required to withstand high temperatures when cutting and also hold a sharp edge. Armor plate. Armor-piercing bullets and shells. Titanium is a gray, light metal. 
better strength to weight ratio than any other metal at room temperature. Is used in corrosive environments. Lightweight, good strength. And non-magnetic properties. Titanium alloys possess high specific properties. Have a good fatigue strength tensile strength ratio with a distinct fatigue limit. And have some retain considerable strength at temperatures up to 400 to 500 degrees centigrade. Generally. There is also a good resistance to corrosion and corrosion fatigue. Although properties are adversely affected by exposure to temperature and stress. Used to produce things like. Turbine blades. Bone implant. Silicon manganese steel when silicon is present in steel in amounts of 0.6%. It imparts fluidity to the steel intended for castings. Like silicon. Manganese acts as a deoxidizer. Both elements are present in all steels in small amounts. But when they are present in amounts of more than 0.6%. They are considered silicon manganese alloy steels. This alloy has good ductility and high strength. It is used for springs and punches. Stainless steel. Alloying elements are 18% chromium and 8% nickel. Silicon, molybdenum, manganese, and titanium may also be present. Primary application where corrosion resistance is important. The nickel chromium oxide forms on the surface of the metal which protects the steel from the corrosive attack. This oxide film is self-healing in that, if scraped or scratched, the oxide film is quickly regenerated. Machinability depends on the hardness and the alloy content of the metal. Stainless steel is used. In the food, arrow and marine industries, and for springs. Turbine blades. Hydraulic equipment. Valves and fasteners. Stainless steel. It is the element chromium, CR, that makes stainless steel stainless. Steel must contain a minimum of about 11% chromium in order to gain resistance to atmospheric corrosion. Higher percentages of chromium make steel even more resistant to corrosion in high temperatures. Nickel is added to improve ductility, corrosion resistance, and other properties. Stainless steel. Excluding the precipitation hardening types that harden over a period of time after solution heat treatment. There are three basic types of stainless steels. The martensitic and. Ferritic types of the 400 series and. Austenitic types of the 300 series. Stainless steel. The martensitic. Hardenable type has carbon content up to 1% or more. So it can be hardened by heating to a high temperature. And then quenching, cooling, in oil or air. The cutlery grades of stainless are to be found in this group. The ferritic type contains little or no carbon. It is essentially soft iron that has 11% or more chromium content. It is the least expensive of the stainless steels. And is used for such things as building trim and pots and pans. Both ferritic and martensitic types are magnetic. Stainless steel. Austenitic stainless steel contains chromium and nickel. Little or no carbon. And cannot be hardened by quenching but it readily work hardens while retaining much of its ductility. For this reason it can be work hardened until it is almost as hard as a hardened martensitic steel. Austenitic stainless steel is somewhat magnetic in its work hardened condition. But non-magnetic when annealed or soft. The three basic types of stainless steel. Austenitic. Contains little or no carbon. Cannot be hardened. Also contains nickel. Will work hardened to almost as hard as hardened martensite. Non-magnetic and less work hardened. Identified by 300 series of numbers. The three basic types of stainless steel. Martensitic. Contains 1% carbon. So it can be hardened by heating to a high temperature and quenching in oil or air. Cutlery is made from the type. Identified by 400 series of numbers. The three basic types of stainless steel. Ferritic contains little or no carbon. Cannot be hardened. Essentially soft iron with 11% chromium. Less expensive. Used for pots and pans. Identified by 400 series of numbers. Ceramics are encountered by machinists mainly as cutting tool materials. There are two main groups of ceramics. Single oxides. Carbides. Both ceramic groups have similar characteristics. They have a high melting point, 2050 degrees centigrade and upwards. This permits high cutting speeds when ceramics are used as cutting tool materials. They have a very rigid bond and are therefore brittle, so they are not the most suitable material for high-impact loading situations, for example, deep interrupted cuts. They can machine metal while red-hot, without losing hardness or cutting edge. They are the third hardest thing to a diamond. They are used as grinding abrasives and cutting tools. Polymers are more commonly known as plastics. The element carbon forms the base of polymers. The term plastics define as it is used in the plastics industry. Plastics are polymerized. High molecular weight. Synthesized substances composed primarily of organic compounds. Plastics, which are solid in the final state. 
have the property of becoming fluid at some particular stage, so they can be formed or molded into the desired shapes. The two main groups that plastic materials are classified as. Thermosetting materials undergo a chemical change to attain the final hardened stage. The molecular structure is changed, and the material cannot be restored to its original state. Thermoplastic. Materials undergo only a physical change and can be reground, softened, and remolded. Thermosetting materials Alkid automotive ignition systems, transformer boards. B. Casein buttons, beads, and adhesives. C. Melamine dinnerware, shaver housings. B. Phenolic protective coating, varnishes, bonding agent. B. Phenol formaldehyde ashtrays, appliance handles, washing machine agitators. Epoxy adhesives, models, tool parts, paints. G. Polyester luggage, reinforcement and boat hulls. Thermoplastic materials. Cellulosic steering wheels, tool handles, tubing, and pipe. B. Polystyrene wall tile, food containers, toys. C. ABS housings for portable appliances. B. Vinyl raincoats, packaging, garden hoses, floor tile. B. Acrylic outdoor signs, optical lenses, automobile tail lights. Nylon rope, gears, bearings, brush bristles. G. Polyethylene packaging, low molding of containers, insulation of electrical wire. H. Polypropylene pipe and pipe fittings. I. Fluorocarbons gaskets, frying pan coatings, snow shovel coating. Here are some distinguishing characteristics of polymers. They are good electrical insulators. They are relatively low in strength compared to metals or ceramics. They are resistant to chemical attack. Care must be taken when machining polymers to avoid distortion of the workpiece by chuck jaw pressure. Teflon. Trade name for a solid chemically inert polymer of tetrafluorothylene stable, up to temperatures around 572 degrees Fahrenheit, 300 degrees centigrade. Today, Teflon is used as a coating for myriad metals. Fabrics and wires. But also as a plastic in its own right. Found in industries as varied as aerospace and pharmaceuticals. Teflon is used in electrical insulation. Baskets. And in making low adhesion surfaces, e.g., for nonstick cookware. Composites are the combination of two or more materials which do a better job in desired application than the component materials do individually. The composite will have properties of each component part. Examples of composites. Fiberglass reinforced plastic combines the strength of fiberglass with the lightness of plastic to produce a strong light material. Steel reinforced concrete. Duffnel, phenolic plastic and cotton fibers. Laminates of metals. Woods and plastics. When machining tufnol, fiberglass reinforced plastic and some other composites. The cuttings create dust particles, which can become a health hazard. Cast irons. Cast iron is primarily an iron carbon alloy with some small amounts of silicon, manganese, phosphorus and sulfur. They are usually used to produce castings where low cost is important. But they are also available in bar form. The major characteristics of cast irons are. They have a low melting point 1200 degrees centigrade approximately, and when melted. They become very fluid, enabling intricate shapes to be cast with relative ease. They are very strong in compression but comparatively weak in tensile strength. Making them unsuitable for such things as shafts or bolts, where tensile strength is important. The carbon content is usually within the 2.5% to 4% range. Which under normal circumstances is more than can be absorbed by the iron. And so the carbon in the form of graphite is in a free state within the metal. Which makes cast iron a dirty metal to machine. After machining cast iron for a few hours. You will find a fine layer of dust on your machine, and your hands will be black from contact with the graphite dust. Cast iron is generally easy to machine. Due to the dampening and lubricating properties. Although the cutting speed you use should be lower than you would use for medium carbon steel. Cutting tool wear can be caused by pockets of sand and hard spots where part of the casting may have been cooled quickly. Applications of cast iron. When parts of cast iron casting are required to be harder wear resistant. Metal blocks, chills, of the required shape are added to the sand mold. So that the liquid cast iron will cool more rapidly than the rest of the casting which is not in contact with the chills. You will find machining the chilled areas of the cast iron more difficult than the rest of the casting. When machining cast iron your first roughing cut should penetrate the hard abrasive outer skin of the casting to preserve tool life. Care should be taken when threading cast iron. To prevent crumbling of the threads. Light cuts normally ensure good thread. Examples of parts made from cast iron are. Machine beds and frames. Vises. Engine blocks. Manhole covers. Because the graphite is in a free state. That acts as a lubricant. Making cast iron ideal for machine slides. Types of cast iron. There are five basic types of cast iron. 
gray cast iron, white cast iron, malleable cast iron, ductile cast iron, alloy cast iron. Alloy cast iron. The properties of alloy cast iron are governed by the alloy mix which can take on a large variety of combinations. Some of the most common alloying elements are nickel, chromium, molybdenum, copper, and manganese. The alloy content is usually up to 3%. Alloy cast iron is usually manufactured in specialized foundries. It retains the advantages of being easily cast, while taking on the advantages imparted by the alloying elements, such as wear resistance or corrosion resistance depending on the alloy mix. Ductile cast iron, sometimes called spheroidal graphite iron, is so called because the carbon is contained in the structure in the form of small spheres. These spheres are produced by alloying the cast iron with magnesium. Ductile cast iron resembles steel in its properties and tends to produce continuous chips when being machined. Among its applications are tuck bodies, face plates, crankshafts, and cylinder heads in the automotive industry. Gray cast iron. This is the most common and least expensive type. The carbon is contained in the structure as flakes of graphite. When fractured, this type of cast iron has gray-black appearance. When cast, gray cast iron is cooled slowly, which allows the carbon graphite to separate into a free state. This gives the metal good wear resistance because of the lubricating properties of the graphite flakes. White cast iron is hard and brittle, making it the most difficult type to machine. When fractured, it is silver white in color. Because most of the carbon has been absorbed into the iron, past cooling of the casting combines the carbon with the iron, creating a metal with low impact resistance but high abrasion resistance. White cast iron is used in crushing machinery and railroad car wheels, although its largest use is in the production of malleable cast iron. Malleable cast iron. This is produced from white cast iron by a process known as annealing. Annealing is simply heating metal beyond a temperature where the crystal structure changes and then cooling very slowly, sometimes as long as 10 days. Instead of turning into gray cast iron with graphite flakes, it becomes malleable cast iron, which has the carbon present as nodules. This produces a tougher type of cast iron. Malleable is not the correct word to describe any type of cast iron. An example of malleability would be the way a piece of lead is easily deformed by a blow from a hammer. The term malleable is used in this case to suggest this type of cast iron is malleable to a greater degree than other types. Copper is a soft heavy metal. It is an excellent conductor of electricity and is very ductile, which means that it can be drawn into wire and pipe forms without breaking. It is also anti-corrosive. Copper is used in the electrical and plumbing industries. Because copper is so soft it is not an easy material to machine, as it tends to clog up drills and milling cutters. Special high helix drills and spiral fluted taps are often used to overcome the clogging tendency of copper. Copper and nickel can be alloyed together in any amount, without any combination of the two elements, causing a brittle material. It should be noted that copper-nickel alloys become nickel-copper alloys when the amount of nickel exceeds the amount of copper. These alloys will be discussed at a later stage. Copper-nickel alloys are sometimes called cupronicles. And they are corrosion-resistant and silver in color when above 15% nickel content. Some products are copper-nickel fasteners and sea water systems. Copper, nickel, zinc alloys. Also known as nickel silver. These alloys are essentially brass with nickel added. It is a good corrosion resistant alloy with an attractive silver white cologne color. One of the largest uses of this alloy is in the manufacture of cutlery, which is easily silver plated. The initials EPNS stamped on the handle stand for electro plated nickel silver. These alloys are also used for jewelry and fasteners. The alloy composition is approximately 60% copper, 25% nickel, with zinc making up the remainder. Brasses are alloys of copper and zinc. They make up the largest group of copper alloys in general use. Brasses are broken down into two useful types. Alpha brass with a zinc content from 0% to 36% is a ductile metal which makes it ideal for drawing into wire rolling into sheets. This type of brass is used for cartridge cases. Alpha beta brass has a zinc content of 36% to 42%. As more zinc is added to the copper, the atomic structure of the metal changes. This type of brass is harder and more brittle than alpha brass. But machinability is better because it does not tend to tear like the alpha brasses. Brass is used as a bearing material because of its lack of affinity with steel. An example would be the arbor support on a horizontal milling machine or the bushings for the feet and lead screw shafts on an engine lathe. Bronze was originally an alloy of the elements copper and tin, but a family of bronzes exist now. 
which do not have tin as the principal alloying element with the copper alloys. There are three main bronzes. Plain tin copper bronzes. In these alloys, the tin content is usually up to 18%. As the tin content becomes higher, the bronze becomes more brittle. Phosphorus bronzes. When phosphorus is added to plain tin copper bronzes, the amount of phosphorus rarely exceeds 1% of the copper tin alloy, but it adds significantly to the tensile strength of the alloy. Phosphorus bronze is used as a bearing material because of its low friction. Aluminum bronzes. They usually have aluminum content of 4% to 11%. This copper alloy has high strength and corrosion resistant properties. Pure nickel alloys. Pure nickel alloys are used for their good corrosion resistance. They have mechanical properties similar to low carbon steel. This nickel alloy is hardenable, but still maintains its excellent corrosion resistance. An alloy called duranical is an exception. It contains approximately 4% aluminum and small amounts of other elements. This nickel alloy is hardenable, but still maintains its excellent corrosion resistance. This range of alloys is used in the food processing and chemical industries. The highest percentage of nickel used in its pure form is used as an alloying element for other alloys, approximately 80%. And the remainder, in about equal proportions, is used for electroplating and these pure nickel alloys. Nickel copper alloys, monals. The alloying element which makes up the highest percentage of the alloy usually determines the name of the alloy. Nickel copper alloys have a larger percentage of nickel than copper being approximately 60% nickel. As mentioned with copper nickels, these two elements can be alloyed together in any percentage without encountering any undesirable brittleness. Nickel copper alloys are known commonly as monals, T. Here are various types of monals available. The alloy varies slightly to produce grades which are more easily cast or cold worked. Monals were originally produced from an ore which contained nickel and copper found in the Sudbury area, but are now produced by alloying. Nickel chromium alloys, inconals. These alloys are used when strength at high temperatures and corrosion resistance are important. Example applications for nickel chromium alloys are exhaust valves, jet engine components, gas turbine blades and high temperature steam pipes. The percentages of the alloying elements vary slightly around 75% nickel, 16% chromium, and 8% molybdenum, with small amounts of other elements making up the remainder. Nickel chromium iron alloys, inkalloys. The approximate composition of these alloys is 30% to 35% nickel, 20% chromium and 45% iron, with small amounts of other elements. Inkalloys are used as electrical resistance alloys. For example, in heating elements in toasters. Aluminum, copper and lead have the following properties. Aluminum. Good resistance to corrosion. Good conductor of electricity. Good conductor of heat. Copper. Has excellent electrical conductivity. Has excellent heat conductivity. Good resistance to corrosion. Easily welded, brazed or soldered. Lead. Has good resistance to corrosion. Resists attacks by acids. Has low melting point and strength. Aluminum is a soft, light-colored, lightweight metal which is seldom used in its pure form. But when it is alloyed with other elements it becomes a versatile material. Aluminum is corrosion-resistant, a good conductor of electricity and heat, able to form high-strength alloys when other elements are added. Non-magnetic, generally easy to machine. Non-sparking. Aluminum is used for light-weak automobile cylinder blocks, automatic transmissions, and aircraft structural components. Aluminum copper alloys, duralumin. These alloys contain up to 4.5% copper and other elements are present in small quantities. Duralumin was first discovered by a German engineer. Who discovered by accident that this aluminum alloy when heated and quenched became harder and stronger the longer it was left. Up to 50% harder and stronger. One of this alloy's earliest applications was for the superstructure of zeppelins. This alloy is kept at sub-zero temperatures to prevent premature hardening. Duralumin is used today for aircraft frames and skins. The mechanical properties are similar to those of mid-steel, low-carbon steel. Aluminum manganese alloys. This alloy is not heat-treatable, but has good machinability, and it is easily welded. The amount of manganese is only 1.5% approximately. Its applications are kitchen utensils, structural components, gas and oil tanks, tubing and sheeting. How aluminum is made. It's a very involved and complicated procedure. This is a briefly explained the process. We will be watching a full video that goes into more depth. Raw material is crushed, washed and dried prior to refining. Raw material, bauxite, is mixed with crushed lime, soda ash and water, and then goes through a series of washing, filtering and heating operations to form a white powder called alumina. 
the alumina is then further refined by electrolysis to give pure aluminum which can then be cast into pig aluminum for later fabrication. Steel making is like making a cake. If I would like my cake to taste and smell like strawberries I would add strawberries or strawberries extract. The same thing with chocolate. It is basically the same thing with metals. Let's say I want steel that is rust resistant. We would add. Nickel and chromium. Aluminum. When added to molten steel. Mixes very quickly with any undissolved oxygen and is therefore considered one of the most common deoxidizers in making steel. Aluminum also is used to produce a fine grain structure and to control grain growth. Boron is added to steel in amounts of 0.0005 to 0.003%. To improve hardenability. In combination with other alloying elements. Boron acts as an intensifier. Increasing the depth of hardening during quenching. Carbon. Produces the properties in steel that give it strength. As carbon content increases. There is a corresponding increase in tensile strength and hardness. Additionally, as carbon content increases. Steel becomes increasingly responsive to heat treatment. Cobalt. Is used to increase the red hardness of a steel. It adds much life to a tool by its ability to maintain hardness and cutting ability when it's heated to a dull red during a machining operation. Chromium. Like carbon. Chromium helps the response to heat treatment. An increase in depth of hardness is also noticed with its use. When used in large quantities, it possesses a remarkable resistance to oxidation and corrosion. Used in conjunction with other alloys. Chromium is one of the popular alloying elements. Copper. Is usually added in amounts of 0.20 to 0.30% and helps steel resist corrosion. It also helps in some degree to increase tensile and yield strengths, with only at loss in ductility. Manganese. Is next to carbon in its importance in steel making. This is due primarily because of its ability to resist hot shortness or the tendency to tear while being forged or rolled. Manganese is used in almost every steel made. Increasing responsiveness to heat treatment and acting as a deoxidizer. Molybdenum. Raises hot strength. Has good creep resistance and helps steel resist softening at elevated temperatures. It is used to a large extent in tools and dyes intended for hot working of metal. Nickel. Increases strength and toughness and has good fatigue resistance. Steels with nickel usually have more impact resistance than steels where nickel is absent. This is true especially at lower temperatures. Phosphorus. Is seldom deliberately added to steel, but is carried as a residual or incidental element. When it is added it is usually for the purpose of machinability. Phosphorus is present in all steels and tends to increase resistance to corrosion while increasing yield strength. Lead is used in steel to improve machinability. In small amounts of 0.15 to 0.35% and finely divided and distributed. It has no known effect on the mechanical properties of steel. Sulfur. Is usually found in all steels and like phosphorus is considered a residual element. When added purposely it substantially increases machinability. The amount for this purpose is usually from 0.06 to 0.30%. Sulfur is considered the basic element for free machining steel, it is, however detrimental to the hot forming properties. Silicon. Is the most common deoxidizing agent. In amounts up to 1%, it has a marked strengthening and toughening effect. In higher amounts it produces electrical resistance and gives high magnetic permeability. Titanium. Titanium is added to 18-8 stainless steels to make them immune to harmful carbide precipitation. It is sometimes added to low carbon sheets to make them more suitable for porcelain enameling. Tungsten. Promoted red hardness and hot strength in addition to producing dense grain and a keen cutting edge. These properties make tungsten steels very useful for hot working applications such as. Cutting tools when the steel is hot enough to be low red in color. Vanadium. Is a strong deoxidizer and promotes fine grain structure. It helps steel resist softening at elevated temperatures and seems to resist shock better than steels without it. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you would like to see other great video. Check out my YouTube channel. Shop and math. Please take a moment to like and subscribe it's free and it will help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon of my face and I will do the rest. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching my video. Metallurgy Level 1 Common Core Video 1. And have a great night.